All right, the U.S. Supreme Court heard oral arguments today in the case of U.S. Food and Drug Administration versus Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine, which will determine whether the FDA will be held accountable for removing protections it once deemed necessary for the health and safety of women using the abortion drug mifeprestone. Now, since granting approval, the FDA has removed nearly every safety standard for women's health and safety from these chemical abortion pills which, by the way, now account for more than 60 percent of abortions. Now, this is really paving the way for these pills to be sold through the mail, which would allow the Biden administration to circumvent the pro-life laws that have passed in a majority of the states. Now, we know that a decision will not be released until June at the earliest, but what did we learn from today's hearing? Joining me now to discuss this, Mary Sock. She is the director of the Center for Human Dignity at the Family Research Council, and she spoke on the steps of the Supreme Court this morning at a rally. Mary, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thanks so much for having me on, Tony. All right, so you spoke at a rally at the Supreme Court today, but you also heard the oral arguments that took place inside the building. What can you tell us? There seemed to be a lot of question on standing in this case. Did the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine have standing to bring this suit against the FDA, to hold the FDA accountable for removing the safety standards? We know that the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine represents physicians who work in emergency rooms who have experienced women coming into their emergency room after ingesting mifepristone and needing emergency care. These women don't, these physicians don't have time to, to register a conscientious objection. These women are in, in distress and they're in immediate need of care. And this puts, puts pro-life physicians in a terrible situation where they are then complicit in, in what the abortion industry is trying but, to do. Uh, Mary, they also have to clean up the mess created by this. So. You know, I, I know standing is a legal term as to whether or not they can bring a suit, but certainly they are the ones that are impacted by this because they are the ones that are left to care for the women who the, the big pharma and the Biden administration could care less about sending these pills oftentimes through the mail without any type of medical oversight. It's these doctors that are going to have to tend to these women. Yes, and, and I think we need to recognize the volume of women that, that are going to the ER because of this. The FDA's own label lists that between 2.9 and 4.6 percent of women who take mifepristone will need to go to the will will need to go to the ER following the use of that drug. And what that comes out to based on the number of abortions that Guttmacher has reported for each year is about 20,000 women. That's not something that's as safe as Tylenol, which they're constantly trying to tell us it is. Now, this was a part of the discussion in the court that uh, the, the proponents of this change were saying, well, just because there's an increase in ER visits doesn't really mean anything. Right. The attorney for, for the FDA, Elizabeth Prologer, she said that, you know, an increased number of visits to the ER, that doesn't necessarily mean that there, they were serious adverse events. Many women could have gone to the ER just because they had bleeding, heavy bleeding. And my question for her would be, well, how is a woman who is not a physician supposed to know if her heavy bleeding is hemorrhaging? How is she supposed to know if she's in a life-threatening situation? Shouldn't that burden be on the person who gave her that abortion drug? And, and that is why that FDA safety standard should be there. Of course, we know that every use of the abortion drug is tragic because it takes an unborn child's life. But this removal of the safety, safety standard makes it especially tragic for children and their mother. So, Mary, the term another adverse effects, that, that is actually a term that's used to uh, kind of track these um, medical incidents. But that's not happening when it comes to the abortion pill. Isn't that an issue here? Right. So the FDA actually removed the requirement for prescribers to report adverse events adverse events using mifepristone to Danco. And then for Dan, Danco, then would report those to the FDA. Danco uh, was asked in this case, you know, why wouldn't you want to know the number of adverse events about this drug? 
And of course, they hemmed and hawed about how, well, Danco still has to report. It's just prescribers who don't have to report. Well, how many people are calling up the manufacturer of the drug company to tell them, hey, I had an adverse, of, an adverse reaction to the drug? That's just not happening. So it's, it's unrealistic to expect that process. So it's, it's smoke and mirrors. They're just trying to, uh, to, to cover the tracks so they can say, well, we, you know, these increase in ER visits don't necessarily mean adverse events. But how do we know? Because we're not tracking it. Exactly. And that's what the FDA is using for all of this. But it is important to recognize the FDA admits that they know that 2.9 to 4.6 percent of women will head to the ER following the use of this drug. This is not dumping on the emergency room doctors. That's not something that just happens to happen by accident, that's a feature of the use of mifepristone. Uh, very quickly, Mary, we're, we're up against the break, but uh, we filed an amicus brief in uh, this case. Were those aspects addressed today? No, one one portion of it that was not addressed that I wish had been was the, the problem of intimate partner violence and the use of mifepristone. There have been cases, a recent case in Texas, where a woman who was was thrilled to be pregnant with her child uh, her husband ended up poisoning her water with mifepristone, trying to cause the abortion wow. of her wow. child. That, that Mary, baby, thankfully, was born healthy. Mary, we're up against a break. Thanks so much for joining us.